scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I have not found one man from scripture who left all to commit himself to the purposes of Christ. Listen, I have not found one man who took his life as a trophy and said, Lord, find glory in this life and was not relevant when God called Abraham a traditional worshiper in a land called Or of the Chaldeans in Genesis chapter 12 he called Abraham and he said I will make you a great nation and all of that and then he says come out of your father's house in other words come into a life come into a life of dependence and at the end he turned a man to a nation the same thing he did for Gideon the same thing he did for Moses the same thing he will do to any man you've heard me say it and I will repeat it tonight the Lord told me years ago he said if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you because in God's mind it doesn't make any difference whether the virtues are with him or with me the allegiance does not change so God can commit to you what is in his hands because he knows that it is still his own in your hands this attitude of ownership you will never hear me say my ministry no my ministry these are till today you've heard me say it again and again I am and, and a lot of people have felt bad I still feel my body still shakes to look at someone and call my son in the gospel a lot of people have said you've never called me son you've never called me daughter because to call someone son or daughter it it, it even looks like I'm, I'm i'm embarrassing myself because compared to where god wants me to be i'm only a step out of the cave yet some of you this is the hallmark of your ministry there is such appetite to surround people with everybody including your father and mother and everybody they are your sons and daughters and we pride ourselves in it this is my church of 20 members. They are all my children. No. I'm showing you a principle that will change your life in everything. My business. So you pay the bills and it kills you. My business. He said, let it not be. Deuteronomy chapter 18. That when thou art built these houses from verse 14 down to 18. Right? And you have done this and that. That you say my power. And the strength of my hands has given me this. He said, but thou shalt remember the Lord your God. Why? Because you can forget. Let me tell you, success can erode the place of God in the life of a man. It's God speaking to us. Oh God, I want power. I want the miraculous grace. You know, I see people, I receive all kinds of text messages from people. I remember I think two weeks ago one gentleman came uh, was it two weeks or so he came from I don't know which city he sent me a text he said apostle I'm coming to draw everything you carry that he wants a, a quad I think it's um, four is what quadruple right portion and I laughed I said look at look at this boy just kidding himself because you think you can inherit sacrifice you can't inherit death it's, it's a path he said verily verily i say unto you except a wheat falls to the ground 
that's not a gift that's a reward except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it abides alone i can release grace upon you but i cannot give you my secret place i cannot give you the priority i can only pray that grace be supplied and help you understand my convictions but it will be up to you to say lord this is my job my wife my children my ministry my career i love all of them but i push all of them behind to make you first not just that find a place and and wage yourself in the midst of these things so you have your career usually money is the first money then wife then children then husband then god then politics then something he's just somewhere in the list the jealousy of god will fight anything above him in your life even if he's the one who gave you he will fight it it is his idea that everything in your life only finds relevance to the degree to which it is behind him so your gifts and talents are only relevant to the degree to which he is above them your prosperity is only relevant to the degree to which he is above them is god speaking to us open your mouth and pray in one minute and say lord i make you my priority please pray my priority not an instrument of relevance lord you are my priority are you praying koinonia my priority not money not fame not marriage not children not education they are all important don't get me wrong but they are useless the moment christ is not above them believe me sooner or later you will learn the vanity of life outside of christ he is he does not add taste to life he gives it meaning jesus christ is not the salt of the earth jesus christ is life he does not add taste to your life no jesus christ does not add he introduces life to you he said this is the testimony that god has given us eternal life then he says and this life is in his son he who has the son has eternal life hallelujah listen listen never give god your remaining time you spend your time looking for money looking for wife husband children then eventually you feel guilty because usually you will not get any much result so you now run to christ and say okay god i know that you are not happy with me let me give you one day no it's not about giving god one day of a retreat god does not want one day he doesn't even want once a week he wants everything if he's not lord of all then everything that stands his way is your god praise the lord is god speaking to us the law of absolute surrender jeremiah 29 please 13 and 14. what are the benefits of god being a priority in the life of a man jeremiah 29 when you read from verse 13 it says and ye shall seek me listen and find me when you seek me with all your heart sincerely speaking please hear me look up look up brothers and sisters hear me this half-hearted commitment towards god that we do one leg in and one leg out when it's favorable i love him when it's not favorable i don't love him you will never find the god i serve that way you must give him everything completely it can't be god and something else no the the might and the jealousy of god puts him in a class all by himself are we together he says you will find me only when you seek me with all your heart with all your heart 
with all your heart the problem is we are not seeking God with all our hearts we are seeking what he can give a number of us are gathered here if I begin to prophesy now and I say oh stand up your name is this this and that many of us will be happy and say thank God I came for today's service you see because that's really what you want man of God what is my problem what do I do about it so we have created all kinds of systems in the body of Christ to cover our half-hearted following God are we together we follow God half-heartedly when demons start oppressing us we look for a man quickly and just drop money and because the man needs the money he will not rebuke you he will now collect it and say go it is done it's not done let me tell you it is not done you will go back and those spirits will oppress you because this what you are giving is bribe there is no amount of seed you give a man of God that will cover the place that only your total commitment to God are we together yes and pastors stop collecting money from people and watching their spiritual lives go down and tell them go it is done I'm telling you now if anybody has told you that it is not done there is a lot more to do sow your seed bless a man of God but don't come to bribe a man to say oh, man of God pray for me me too I, I'm so busy you know we are not like you we really don't have that time to pray if you don't have the time to pray you don't have the time to live if you don't have the time to study the word and know God then please pray that your life will be given to someone who is serious with God so that at least maybe you can go to heaven or so but when you are in this earth you live by the systems of the king hallelujah nothing irritates me like seeing young people who are not passionate about God you see a guy stand and then you hear him talk and there is nothing kingdom in his conversation no love for God man of God how are you may God bless you in this missionary journey he doesn't even know he, he's trying to use Christian languages to look spiritual he says, as you are helping us in this vineyard in this wow where did you keep what nothing in the kingdom has altered your communication but they know every song they know every show they know everything that's the person saying he doesn't have time they know every football team right they know the winners of uefa champions league they are hoping that cashless uh, mastercard cashless will take them to the finals of uefa champions league they are hoping all these things will happen and they have no knowledge of God tell me one scripture where God said he will prosper you you don't know but you are there advocating for a man who will never tell you thank you you see we have to straighten our thinking please hear me God is not a herbalist a herbalist is not concerned about relationship he's only concerned about practices you don't even need to know the name of the herbalist he just says turn around drop your chicken drop your goat drop the money go it is done you don't know his name but when you come to God and say God I stretch my hands he pushes your hand away and says give me your heart let's start with your heart before we talk about your hand hallelujah number two the second key secret of the kingdom I'll be sharing with you tonight we'll have to hurry up it's found in Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 please let's hurry up Proverbs 23 verse 7 I'll read it for as he thinketh in his heart the word heart there can also be translated mind so is he for as he thinketh in his heart please look up so is he there is a law in the kingdom that realities are first formed within and from the realm of the spirit before they find expression in the physical. Please listen. That your life is only a looking mirror. And when you want to alter the course of your life, you don't alter it by changing things physically. You alter it by changing something within. Are we together? Imagine that this projector is a big mirror and you saw yourself and maybe there was dust on your face and then you are trying to chuck your hand in the mirror to clean the dust is that wisdom 
that's the same thing that you are doing when you try to correct something in your life physically without correcting it from your mind because everyone every one of you under the sound of my voice is a slave to your conditioning your paradigm your ideology are we together now i'm doing what i'm doing right now because there are certain sets of convictions that make me believe that this is the way to live a relevant life are we together when a gentleman sacks his jeans down and holds it go in his hand it's not just that there is a spirit oppressing him there is a mindset are we together there is an understanding within him that defines success to him and lets him know that if you want to succeed these are the things you do so he's a slave you see the body is an obedient instrument the body will obey your convictions hundred percent your body will move you only in the direction of your convictions sadly not your intentions so you may be hearing what i'm saying now you want to change but there is a conviction in you that would not allow you change listen this is why people remain poor this is why people remain sick this is why people remain failures they hear the word and they're ah i'm happy i've had this word but that was just their intention their true conviction is still what came from their village what took 20 years to become a stronghold in your mind is god speaking to us so when you come to the kingdom as the word of god is being taught you know what i'm doing to you there is a replacement going on in your mind are we together new ideas that are now consistent with the way of god are superimposing the ideas that came from culture the ideas that came from the our being victimized by reason of our post-colonial the side effect of being under the colonial rule that mindset of servitude as the word of god is coming is bringing new ideas and all of a sudden your concepts are changing you who would have been rebellious about the things of god now can sit down in church just like they gave the testimony our abuja people right how that someone who was not in the faith is now sitting down and burning for god three years ago that person had a conviction an ideology that informed him otherwise or her otherwise and now they found something you listen when you get born again the next assignment of the holy spirit is to take the principles of the word of god in partnership with your obedience and that there be a progressive replacement of wrong paradigms wrong ideologies are we together if you are smoking there is an understanding making you do it the issue is not to say stop smoking you cannot stop until the paradigm is changed and the spirit that keeps that paradigm effective leaves you when a man beats his wife something told him that's the way to keep your wife obedient and usually he would have interacted with people from his village and they said the way we, we have done this before you were born don't let ladies talk nonsense when they do anything beat the living daylight out of them do it once twice maybe three times or four and i'm telling you you have everything settled so you you are born again but you carry your village with you god wants to open you up to a beautiful life maritally but your village is interrupting it please i like you to make a commitment that you will have no loyalty to any mindset that is not of the Christ no matter how long you've held on to it when you come before the Lord you must lay it down in the name of Jesus Christ do you know why we resent ourselves and we hate our cultures I'll tell you why we hate people from different cultures because of what we think comes with the culture are we together a prevalent mindset so if I say a man from Plateau State or Kaduna State or Kogi State or Akwaibom or Lagos or an Igbo man, we associate these people with certain things ranging from irresponsibility.
to anger to loss for money to pride and so on and so forth to promiscuity but those things are ideologies they are conditionings listen the kingdom is another culture greater than your culture you can choose to remain an evil man or become a citizen of the kingdom you can choose to remain a northerner together with the strings of irresponsibility associated with our territory or you can come into the kingdom and let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus are we together conditioning so you love God but that mindset of being a champion is still eating you up so the moment you are in church and a man of God is preaching you try to outshine them that one is not God you are anointed but you are still a victim of a conditioning that you are only a celebrity when you are the only one doing what you are doing so you push every other person and make sure nobody has an, an opportunity to grow listen please hold on do you know that many of us pastors some of the things we introduce to members that we brag about and make it look like it's the Holy Spirit that told us it's not the Holy Spirit there is where the Holy Spirit stopped and our village is continued but we mix everything and say it was the Holy Spirit are we together I can be angry and call you stupid and instead of accepting that look this, this one is a spirit this is not the Holy Ghost but I'll say, look, it's, it's just the zeal of the Lord. What do you expect? I have an apostolic anointing. Instead of being humble to admit, are we together now? Yes. Or the moment God reveals to me that you have one million in your account, I'm supposed to pass. He didn't say I should talk to you. But something in my territory that, that stimulates an appetite for material gain, this one has nothing to do with God again. I took advantage of prophetic access and saw one million and I'm drawn by my lust. Now you won't know because the atmosphere is heavy. People are falling under the anointing. So you assume it's God that is doing it. And I walk up to you and say, young man, stand up. You have one million. Like, Hi! You say, yes. Exactly one million. Yes. He came last week. Yes, go and send it to my account quickly. Now listen, I will, I will be so bold about it. You will never believe it came from me. I'll say, look, don't think I'm looking for your money. Just go and do this thing for your own good. And the guy will run and transfer it. And I'll say, thank you, Jesus. Now, does that mean, it doesn't mean I don't love the Lord. But there is a mindset that is mixing with ministry. Are we together? And if it wants, it must change. That's why there are people who don't mind getting anything. You love God. But then eventually, when there are bills that need to be paid, you will create some kind of prophetic platform and say where are so 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 and so people who must do a and b and c and we make it look like it was god no those ministries are suffering because of their lack of understanding the financial principles of the kingdom and they will have to manipulate a system to cover up for their lapse of not understanding one system of the kingdom please i'd like you to pray for one minute and say, Lord, any conditioning in me that is responsible for my failure, no matter how long I've held on to it, let it go tonight. Please pray. Pray. I'm sharing with you principles that will change your life. Please pray. Some of you, that's why you may never enter a godly relationship. Any relationship you enter, you love God. You are tongue-talking, but there is an understanding you have about relationship, about marriage, that will never allow you to be in a meaningful relationship. Some of you do not have friends. Because there is a thinking. There is a paradigm. It came with your village. The validity. The lifespan of any good friend in your life is two weeks. Something you do will drive them away. Take responsibility and pray. Stop saying it's just demons. Pray and say Lord. I realize that your word says. To guard my heart with all diligence for out of it proceeds the issues of life regardless of my village and my territory regardless of where i come from there is a behavioral pattern that is tied to inferiority 
I have never realized that I'm behaving that way because there is a hidden sense of low esteem, low self-esteem. I have brought it into ministry. I have brought it into business. I have brought it into my home and it's destroying my home. Let it go in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Some of us are very cynical. We are very critical. You criticize everybody. You are a sadist. Your communication is always on the negative. Take responsibility and accept tonight that there is a mindset that is making you behave that way. And cry to the Lord for change. Don't say we are all like that in our family. Pray. There is a mindset that keeps you greedy. There is a mindset that makes you not to be a giver. There is a mindset that makes it look like tithing is a gimmick from men of God to collect your money and you remain poor. There is a mindset that makes you think your entire finances will come from salary and is killing you right now. Pray and say, Lord, any understanding, any paradigm I have held on to that is not consistent with your path I, I become disloyal to it tonight. Hallelujah. Number three. Proverbs chapter three verse five to seven. Is God blessing us already? Please learn these keys. And use them. And watch the mountains before you melt like wax before the fire. Hallelujah. Some years ago. I found out listen that every time I had challenges in my life any kind of challenge it was difficult for me to manage it I didn't know what to do as a leader whenever I was faced between decisions very major decisions I didn't know how to manage some of the confusions that I experienced until I found what I'm about to teach you if you learn what I'm about to teach you now every time you are confused you will find your way out ready Proverbs chapter 3, please, from verse 5. Learn this. The third law. The key to receiving divine strategies from God. The key to receiving supernatural direction. A way out of a, a situation that should eat you and destroy your life. That when men say, this is it, there is no way out. Hear me, people of God, there is a way out. If you know what to do. It's found in Proverbs chapter 3. From verse 5 to 7 and it says trust in the Lord with all your heart right it says and lean not on your own understanding the next verse is where the key is in all your ways how many how many in all your ways it says acknowledge him what is the blessing behind that process and he shall direct until that experience happens your path is crooked it says whenever you get to a point in your life where there is no way out humanly there is a key the key is to acknowledge him i know it looks simple until you apply it are we together let me tell you how to acknowledge someone i know that i've given this example but please say jimmy stand sir look at this if this guy is the CEO of a multi-billion dollar bank, are we together? And he has come in our midst right now and I want to introduce him. Listen, let me show you how to acknowledge a man. I would start something like this. Ladies and gentlemen, in our midst today, we are privileged to have a Jimmy Adekbe here. In 1998, he got award for most innovative entrepreneur. In 1999, he got award for the most customer-driven company. In 2005, he I begin to list all his achievements. Listen, are we together now? And then I'll tell you, look, it's a privilege to have him here. Please, everyone, we cannot continue until we recognize this rare gem with a standing ovation celebrate this person i have acknowledged him 
let me tell you what that does it puts pressure on him to repeat what you just acknowledged are we together now i cannot say he got this award this award and i say please come and tell us good evening and then he comes up and blows his credentials have you seen people you honored come on stage and you see how they are under pressure to preserve the honor you have given them you're honoring and acknowledging them put pressure on them to represent that's what you do to god so when i get to a crossroad where there is no way out and men say like david in psalm 3 he said many a day that rise up against me many a day that say where is his god all of a sudden you forget about the problem and you say where is the god that parted the red sea with his nostrils you are acknowledging him are we together you start listing the things he did that's what david did to goliath where is the god that delivered me from the bear where is the god that delivered me from the lion and he was putting pressure on the integrity of god in other words god your name is about to go to the mud and i am shouting it before men that you are the one that did it before and all of a sudden he shall make straight your path that's what the bible says i show you a secret of endless victory because you see as you rise there are many people who will pray for your downfall not because they hate you your rise is equivalent to their failures because it kills every excuse and so in their minds they will be hoping things will go bad to justify that your success is nothing special and at a point you will be at a crossroad when you get to that point then you will open your mouth and begin to worship him and call him all kinds of names it's a secret I've learned. I will shut the door for one hour, two hours. I'm just worshiping him. And say, Lord, I thank you. I remember at so, so, so time when you came through for me. I will sing of your mercies. I remember the day when I did not have five naira. Is it today that I need one million that you cannot give me? I'm acknowledging him. I, I mount pressure on his integrity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's what you should do. You mount pressure on God's integrity by acknowledging him before the forces of darkness. He healed you of HIV. Now cancer wants to destroy you. And people say, you know, I've always suspected this person was not healed. This koinonia, people just come and lie on stage here. HIV healed. Just like that. As if we are stupid, we went to school. Now cancer is eating you and you know humanly speaking that this cancer is progressing. Let me tell you how to deal with it. Forget about the cancer and go back and dance before God. Close your door. Call him all the names that will put pressure on him. I call you healer. Your name is healer. You are the healer to me. I call you healer. Your name is healer. Healer you are and healer you be. Listen, when you mount pressure on him, listen, you know, the way people behave sometimes, we behave as if God, you wrote an exam where you wrote nonsense and it came out A. Now you are in final year and your supervisor looks at you and says if i'm in this department you will not graduate and you are about to depress yourself no go and lock the door and say in hundred level where is the man that brought 3.5 for me regardless of this oh god listen i'm not motivating you i'm giving you a key to get out of confusion and make men swallow their words I pray you believe what I'm teaching you because a day will come you will need it are we together you are confused three years no child and everybody is talking saying if you if you claim that you love God where is the child and then you sit down depressing yourself and say but God you serve Abba am I not serving you you will never get a miracle that way there is a law lean not on your own understanding he says in all your ways acknowledge acknowledge 
acknowledge in one minute can you open your mouth and acknowledge him mention the things he has done in your life before please open your mouth I survived cancer in 99 I survived financial crisis in 2007 is it today I will lack food to eat where is the God of heaven if he gave me a husband will he not give me a child if he gave me a job will he not give me promotion if he granted me grace to graduate will he not give me a job if he gave me life will he not change my genotype from SS to AA pray acknowledge him before Goliath my rent has expired by Friday if I don't pay they will throw me out Lord where are you last year at the dying minute my rent came I acknowledge you ah, yeah, 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 yeah. the mighty God you are the mighty God the great I am hallelujah hallelujah you are the mighty God you are the great I am Come on, acknowledge him before every trouble in your life. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Listen, when you grow in this law there are some challenges you will not even pray about again because how do you start saying God is not faithful when the challenges stand before you there are too many testimonies to make you think about them so what made you cry yesterday will no longer make you cry today listen let me tell you you know why men are bold in the kingdom some of us are bold because we have gone through hell and high water i'm telling you there's nothing you can think about that we've not gone through so when it's like a man who has entered prison and came out entered prison came out entered prison then one day you tell him i'll take you to prison he'll just look at you and say you are joking go and ask your warder his name is philip ask him whether he knows joshua and at the end you have nothing listen satan thrives on your fear he knows that our memories are so short we forget too early he said bless the lord oh my soul and forget not his benefits please lift your voice in one minute to the shame of the devil and say lord you are faithful the marriage will still happen open your mouth and pray i will still be a landlord I will still hold my certificate. That job will still come. Kabarata shapata kata. Lekete preske lebaba. Supplies will come from heaven. Men may laugh at me, but there is a God that sits in heaven. Are you praying it's part of the meeting challenge your fear don't run away from it who are you down mountain where were you when God healed me I really want you to acknowledge him I really want you to acknowledge him Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Unchangeable, unchangeable God. 
God a shout of praise and sit down. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Take this key. Go back with it. And what challenges fear you? Fear you. Because you will find out that nothing is as big as it looks. Let me tell you, I've gone through two many things in my life to tell you no challenge can kill by itself until you direct the gun and shoot it at yourself I have confidence in you Jesus I have confidence in you Savior I have confidence in you anytime Every day, I have confidence in you. Jesus, Jesus, I have confidence in you, Savior. I have confidence in you. Let me tell you something. The next time you see men laughing at you, don't worry. There is already a scripture. He said, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Rejoice not over me. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. He said, though I fall, yet I will rise. There is a mechanism in the kingdom that remedies for it. Aya. Jesus died, but he only died for three days. He had resurrected. Others were talking about his death. On his way to Emmaus, they were busy discussing the man who died. And he said, gentlemen, I'm already, I have a reason. This is outdated curriculum. That's how some people will sit down while they are discussing and saying, ah, this lady now, now wow, I don't know. Or while they are discussing, your text will just come. My God has done it again. The miracle worker has done it again. Please sit down. You see, it is this understanding that can make two people come again. Anybody come? It is this understanding come that can make two people walk with me, walk through life. Someone stands at a point where people say he cannot cross. And another person continues going because there is something this guy knows they at a point they were at the same level but while this guy was praising his way to the next dimension this one was complaining listen let me teach you something the bible says in acts chapter 16 listen that paul and silas they held them bound four guards even if the chains break those guards will kill you the Bible says they prayed 
and they sang it was allowed and the prisoners had them is it in your bible all of a sudden the bible says there was an earthquake it hit the prison this is the part i like it says and all doors opened how many doors it's in your bible it says when they sang and the earthquake came all doors opened you can praise your way out of any pain lord you are so good you are worthy of all my praise lord you are so good you are exalted as the lord most high lord you are so good you are worthy of all my praise lord you are so good Just hurry up, sir. Sit down, sit down, sit down. So we we'll hurry up. I tell you, this thing fired my spirit myself. So after 10 years, he's still rising. As if the devil does not exist. I watched a video of Bishop Oyedeko this morning preparing his congregation. That was before their 35th anniversary. 35 years. Of living as if Satan does not exist and we had a ministration on Sunday the 35th anniversary was this was the last Sunday I made sure I streamed and I followed before I went for the meeting while I was bathing I took my laptop it was streaming so that I would hear from the bathroom in our hotel room before I went out Kenneth Copeland was preaching and then I was listening before Kenneth Copeland came, they danced their way around the stage to the shame of the devil. And I saw his wife, who once died but now alive, dancing together, strong and alive. Our mother was dancing to the shame of the devil. When you dance before your enemy, you frustrate them. Please stop wasting your tears you have cried before every other person but God I forbid you from crying before men there is nothing you are going through that is new under the sun please hear me until you find the key that opens that door you may remain in that captivity forever number what the law of mastery and competence let's hurry up proverbs 18 verse 16. the fourth law i want to teach you secrets of the kingdom the law of mastery and competence proverbs 18 verse 16. the gift of a man makes room for him please come i have to use them three of you any three of you just come Watch this. I want to illustrate this scripture. Come. Watch this. Call this the table of greatness and the table of life. The space is already full. There is no space for anyone. Are we together? Anybody who must go to the table of greatness must show what he's taking along with him. So the Bible says... The concept of something for nothing is armed robbery. There must be something you must carry, your contribution to life. And here's how the Bible puts it. The gift of a man, watch this, will make room for him. Are you seeing that? There was no space, but your gift will push and create a space for you in life. The key to mediocrity is to want everything and contribute nothing mediocrity and hardship in life stems from a mentality that wants everything done for you but with no contribution to life your relevance is tied to your contribution to the purposes of god and the betterment of humanity are we together 
I was teaching at a Kingdom Wealth Summit in Joss. And I said, any man that ever says preachers should not be rich, God will punish him. You know, there are people who, especially when they look at some of us who are young, they just say, forget about all these young boys. So they are all idiots. Just leave them. They know what they are doing. And they give an idea like these people are fraudulent. They are drug barons. They are this and that and that. Or 419 people. No. The measure of your worth and your greatness in life. Hear me please. Is tied to your contribution. Are we together? You pay a carpenter. 5,000 naira. For fixing your door. Because that's how much you perceive his contribution to be. But you pay a pilot 500,000. From the day he graduates, he starts collecting 500,000. You know why? Because 175 people are trusting their destinies for one hour. And he's the one driving it. And they are paying him and saying, you better make sure you read well. To carry the destiny of presidents, prime ministers, royalties, politicians flying is something that you can't do anything about you just pray if the pilot sleeps or he's careless or something happens you are gone so they pay him five hundred thousand for taking that risk when they are carrying out a neurosurgery you pay between 3.5 to maybe 8 million because of the enormity of what that doctor is doing are we together yes Listen, our rewards in life will always be in exact measure to our contributions and our service. I know why God is blessing me as a preacher. It's not because I'm preaching the gospel. It's because I'm adding value to lives. My value may be spiritual. If you think it's easy to cast out devils, try it. If you think it's easy to look at a sick body, and say be healed and he goes to the hospital and finds out that hiv has left him you do it let me tell you if your anointing is only for um children fruit of the womb is enough to employ you for your lifetime because that is that is a contribution now the question i want to ask you is Every man can know where you stand by how much you are contributing. It's wickedness to demand millions when your contribution has not matched that level. There's no point praying. Are we together? Yes. As I stay in the secret place and I learn more about the mysteries of the kingdom, I am equipped by grace to contribute more. And as I contribute more, different kinds of rewards come back now that's not my motivation that's why you don't pay me for teaching but whether i sell it or it's given free i am authorized to be rewarded listen your greatness in life is tied is a direct measure of your contribution if at any point in your life you are not satisfied with your level as far as greatness is concerned then it means you have to do something to your contribution whose life is becoming better because you are alive every day I get up someone's life is changing because I'm alive and you wonder why somebody will bless me is that not wickedness you type a letter for a man for one month he gives you hundred thousand you call yourself a secretary I'm changing the mindsets of people and changing the mindset of their generation and someone sows one million and you say it's wickedness think about it and we have all these these junk people who carry typewriter carry their laptops and say men of god are wearing this and that and doing this and not doing anything because to them they think we're just joking on stage and the person who is talking did not sell his android device to give mission field but he's saying the man of God should sell his watch or his car. Let me tell you. The fivefold ministry is secondary to no other ministry on earth. The second most noble call after the call of ministry 
is the call of a monarch then presidents of whatever nation the president is only there for four years after four years he's stripped of his authority and relevance only a monarch is close to a true man of god irrelevance please make no mistakes to think genuine men of god are nuisance to society go to a seminar and find out how much you will pay for what i'm teaching you now and see the millions of naira that you will have to pay for your mindset being corrected and those guys do not have the grace the anointing equivalent to help you our greatness in life is not measured by connection it's measured by our contribution so you can know right where you are seated how far you are in life and not be angry when you see another person i've not slept i've not slept properly i think maybe in the last one or two weeks because we've been traveling it was about a week since i was in zaria we returned back yesterday returned back had to just take my bath and rush for school of ministry was with them till in the evening and i returned back this morning had a lot of things to do we are supposed to be off to the airport tomorrow to ibadan but then i was happy hearing that um the program has been shifted that's contribution brothers and sisters that's contribution a jimmy's wife made cake for me she makes cakes beautiful cakes that's her contribution i will pay her because i cannot bake it the day i'm tired of paying her i learn how to bake it are we together let me tell you why many people are poor in the kingdom you are not contributing anything so whoever you must receive from you have to give something are we together watch this please lend this this is a little money let me use it for an example i have this money Just hold this. Hold this. watch this this is life whoever can contribute to life must benefit from it financially and otherwise i'm just using this to represent fulfillment are we together now they pay me salary please give me back they pay me no 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 no, no. listen listen they pay me salary are we together i'm not providing any service so i go to someone to fix my car he's contributing he takes from the salary i go to the market woman who had enough sense to risk herself and sit down in the market i pay her are we together now all kinds of things are happening to me i now because i'm not a practitioner of the word i'm falling sick i'm not typing i think pastors are idiot what happens the devourer is destroying me the remaining part of the salary goes to the doctor watch this are we listening what is it to me nothing this is a measure of how much i've contributed to life nothing that's why it always finishes are we together there's no magic about satisfaction and greatness the day i create something that forces him to give me back my money he will need it so he will come to me and give me back something i'm doing will make her bring it back something i'm doing will make it bring it back what is that something if you don't have it stop wondering why you are poor our rewards in life both in terms of money honor and the sense of fulfillment is tied to your contribution i will never feel inferior in life because if i do not carry any other thing i have an anointing i have an anointing that the nations need and they will need it forever it is needed in the morning the afternoon and the evening the precepts of the kingdom that have been communicated to me there is a demand for it that's why you are gathered here that's why not even the rain took you back to your house are we together it's a measure of how much you need this please hear me begin to sharpen your gifts and abilities and tell yourself i'm rising to that position of greatness i will take something in my hands that will veto my background and open the doors of greatness for me is god speaking to someone now there are doctors here the moment they graduate 
for those who are student doctors there is a job for them because the amount of frustration from disobeying the word of god has increased their market in the num the amount of tranquilizers that are consumed every time high blood pressure now affects teenagers good business for doctors darkness shall cover the earth what do you have if i call you right now please three of you stand up one two three and i tell you what do you have to contribute to life that will make you relevant it is wickedness to want to stand here with nothing to contribute so i come to you and you give me the word of god and change my mind you are blessed i come to you and you give me a sense of leadership and innovation you are blessed i come to you and um maybe you solve my security problems and then you come to me and i said don't worry I'm, I'm here i mean it's just a, it's just a political thing that's wickedness listen your greatness is tied to your gifts the gift of a man when discovered when refined please sit down and when deployed will make room for him scriptures cannot be broken has nothing to do with background has nothing to do with age has nothing to do with gender has nothing to do with territorial limitations your gift has equal value in every territory i love people i admire them but not intimidated by any because the gift of god in me does not need refrigeration i don't need electricity for it to come up are we together if you go to the filling station and there's no light you will kill there because they need electricity are we together now if you want a photocopy machine and light goes off and there's no gen nothing for you but bring a demon possessed person whether i'm sleeping or I'm, I'm awake that spirit is living at that point bring somebody whose mind is messed up i can get him born again and teach him the precepts of the kingdom that's value you may not be called into the fivefold ministry are we together but your value will change the money in your hand your value will change everything in your life please write it down i have an assignment this week to discover every gift god has put in me and to serve my generation with that gift and exit myself out of the realm of inferiority and pain and competition we compete with ourselves we hate ourselves there's no need for that there is enough space in fact life is still needing great men are we together life is still needing great men there are people thank you there are people who are looking for this die hard there was a day we looked for this it never came i only wanted 30 naira out of this it didn't come because i was not contributing anything substantial yet i wanted to be blessed it was against the law of god but today it cannot stop coming to me even if i drive it it will not go why value for as long as there is one devil on earth i will not be poor for as long as there is one person's mind that needs to be straightened it's called value please hear me do you know the holy ghost is within you and his presence makes you valuable the presence of the holy ghost gives you the ability to provide supernatural solutions to different dimensions of life's problem you should be fulfilled but you watch how many men are frustrated in our society they get up in the morning and they are angry bus conductors civil servants who are angry going to do a job they don't like everybody angry we vent it at our husbands vent it at our wives on serious pastors vent it at their members we are going to stop here and pray the gift of a man makes room we'll continue next week please rise up and let's pray he's the holy ghost spirit of the living god 
is the Holy Ghost, scepter of the King of Kings. Is the Holy Ghost, seal of the age to come. You're changing everything in obedience to God. Sing it one more time from the depth of your heart. You're the Holy Ghost, Spirit of the living God. You're the Holy Ghost, scepter of the King of Kings. You're the Holy Ghost, seal of the age to come. You're changing. point number one lord i'm leaving this level forever on the strength of the mysteries you are giving me lift your voice and pray i leave this level forever i leave this level forever there is a level of the anointing that i need to step into total surrender is the key to that level there is a level of relevance for the kingdom that I need to step into. Your value, your contribution is the key to that level. There is a level of transformation that I need in my life. The key is to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. To have your ideologies and paradigms change make sure you are praying hallelujah hallelujah i like you to pray and say father from tonight anything that exalts itself above you in my life no matter what it is i bring it down to its rightful place lift your voice and pray it could be ministry it could be business lord i come against that thing stopping the anointing from multiplying in my life stopping my ranking in the spirit Pray every idol taking the place of God in my life. I come against it. I come against it. I come against it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like you to pray and challenge every paradigm. It's a pulling down every stronghold. Stronghold. Something here is creating imaginary giants in your life. Something here is creating imaginary giants. When light comes, you will find out that it was never a giant. I like you to cry and say, Lord, beyond my culture, change my mind beyond my exposure as a Nigerian may your word challenge my paradigms my ideology that came from my failures that came from my background that came from my village my African uh, the, the fact that I'm a, I'm a Nigerian the limitation that came with my territory As we behold him in a mirror we are changed we are changed from glory to glory hallelujah 
Hallelujah. The final prayer point. You are going to call for every dormant gift in you. Some of you are sitting in an ocean, but you are begging for a cup of water. Where is that gift that will end poverty in my life? Where is that gift that will end inferiority? Oh God, reveal it in my life. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. That ability of the Spirit Our rewards in life will always be in exact measure to our contribution. Our rewards in life will always be in exact measure to our contribution. Our rewards in life, our rewards in life, our relevance in life, our greatness in life will always be in exact measure to our contribution. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands as I pray for you. Hallelujah. I've said it again and again. Koinonia will build you to, be, to become a complete kingdom ambassador. Not just that you are anointed and your finances are suffering. Not just that you are doing well financially and failing in relationships. Not just that you are doing well in relationships and failing intellectually. There can be complete balanced growth. You can be a multi-millionaire for the kingdom, yet not carried away by its influence in your mind. And you can be passionate about the kingdom and what it represents. Having a personal relationship with God and then excelling in family excelling in leadership becoming an agent of national transformation it says savior shall arise out of zion and he said they shall judge the mount of esau i pray for you in the name that is above all names and by the power of the holy ghost the kind of encounter you have never had with the holy ghost i pray in this season step into that level of encounter step into that level of encounter step into that level of encounter an encounter that will take your prayer life your word life to a dimension you have never seen i release upon you the grace for that encounter number two i pray for you the level of transformation that it takes to crumble the giants before you let me tell you many giants we so honor are imaginary they are not real the level of transformation it takes for you to rise to a point where you do what has never been done in your family you do what has never been done in your lineage receive the grace for that kind of transformation in the name of jesus christ listen hear me that spirit that keeps telling you you have to be like them everybody was a failure you are also like them i like you to shout no way shout it no way listen my bible says when men say there is a casting down for you you will say there is a lifting up there is something you know that can take you out of your background the last prayer for you and I'm praying this from the depth of my spirit. The hands that lifted you will uphold you to the end. You will not be afraid. Listen, hear me. Ordinary men found what God put in them and it changed the course of their lives. This is one of the testimonies. You probably would not need me except for what he has put in me like he did to me i pray whatever god must do to you to bring out that anointing that grace that illumination that will make you an international figure to the shame of the devil 
that anointing kabata rata shata rabataka reketesh kalabadia brendo soto prashka please lift your hands something is coming upon you now i want to release a grace get ready right now at the count of three the grace the unction right now receive it receive that grace now 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 right now shabakata receive that grace wherever you are inside outside an impartation let deep call on to deep that grace that grace your potentials your abilities the anointing of the holy ghost that distinguishes you in the name of jesus i command it i command it i command it i release it right now right now i command it no more failure no more failure i take you out by prophecy out of the realm of mediocrity out of the realm of failure I speak over your destiny whoever has ignored your grace i stand under this apostolic anointing and i pray your life will force them to swallow their words they told nathaniel can anything good come out of nazareth i prophesy over someone here Water to shame. May your gift bail you out. Water to shame. May your gift bail you out. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and give Jesus thanks. Lord, we give you thanks. We'll continue next week. There are still other powerful principles that I have to share with you. You know why I'm taking time to teach you this? Brothers and sisters, it says they are life to those who find them. When you find it and grace is applied upon you to walk with it, you will, you will be afraid of what your life will become. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Very quickly, I know that our time is spent, but just be patient. In about five minutes, we're done. Please, all those worshiping with us for the first time, aside from our daddy and mommy, I'd like us to honor them. These are David Dam's parents. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me say something. It's a little secret. The first time I met them, I was blown away by the warmth, the love. I mean, when you meet them, you don't want to get out of that environment again. I'm telling you. I met them in Joss and I was looking at David Dam. And in my mind, I said, no wonder. No wonder this guy is this confident and happy. Who would not be confident with parents like this? Some of us escape jungles. We climb high waters rebuke statements that should not be said to be where we are today but when you have parents this loving they deserve double honor bless you ma bless you sir thank you hallelujah please aside from them all those who are worshiping with us for the first time um i'd like you to come here quickly okay before we do that just give me one minute where are all the abuja people please come up quickly so that you receive fresh fire for the next level please quickly in one minute let's honor them let's celebrate them we're one big family there's no space they can come up here please quickly quickly we have five minutes to be out of here stretch your hands everyone and pray for them please come up just our abuja people first just come up line up here quickly you came all the way with a desire in your heart let me pray for you please quickly quickly in one minute so that we can pray when Saul met Samuel, it was never the same. Please pray in one minute. You are about to receive something. It will take back.
by the grace of God you will step into a strange level of grace as I lay my hands on you an anointing will come upon you please I want you to believe it something is already happening to you there is a strong presence of angels here hallelujah at time hold your hands together and lift it up let me pray for you please lift it up high to the heavens I'm about to release an anointing upon you. Let this anointing take you to new levels. At the count of three. One, two, three. Fire. Take it. Take it. Take it. I lay hands on you. Take it right now. Fire. Take it right now. 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 Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. prophesy upon you in the name of Jesus go to your campus set it on fire in the name of Jesus Christ I activate upon you the presence of God that is upon this house carry it physically right now right now carry it physically that mantle that mantle that mantle that is upon this house I release it upon you that mantle that is upon this house I release it upon you go with it and excel hallelujah I call you blessed in the name of Jesus every miracle you came here desiring it is yours right now in Jesus name those who can rise take them to their seats those who cannot just leave them here we're about to round up please God bless you appreciate them please quickly if they are under the anointing just leave them just give me five minutes quickly I needed to do this to honor them they came all the way so that they can take something tangible koinonia is a place of encounter hallelujah you're worshiping with us for the first time aside from them now any other person worshiping with us for the first time please make your way to the front here the altar is congested but make your way to the front hallelujah you are the first to come so i will lay hands on you i will lay hands on the rest receive that fire right now in the name of the lord jesus christ grace for you please every other person make your way to the front there's a reason why we ask you to come it's not to waste your time believe me there is a grace when you come here you just need to come once and that grace must speak in your life Stretch your hands, saints of God. This is Koinonia, a place of encounter, a place of miracles, a place of breakthrough. God is doing supernatural things. The kingdom of God has been allowed to find expression in this territory. Pray for them. The people praying for you are anointed. I want you to receive it. We bless you with the favor that is upon this house. 
we bless you with the gift of access we bless you with intimacy grace to know God grace to love God grace to be so passionate about spiritual things that nothing in this life can take the place of God receive that grace in the name of Jesus hallelujah thank you for coming once again this is koinonia hallelujah listen please this is not our usual venue we meet at christ gospel church just opposite second equa from next week we'll be back there you're welcome to worship with us again and again at the end of the service our media stand is just right um, by my right here you together with all those who have come from far please go to our media stand update your collection of our teachings and you can take them back be a blessing to others and then be blessed by them the lord bless and honor you the lord increase you in the name of jesus i'd like you to quickly follow the young lady waving her hands we are going to welcome you more warmly outside and have your details the lord honor and bless you honor them koinonia in the name of jesus bless them as they go this way please hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.